Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nosa. I'm a medical doctor in the UK and I make videos on medicine and lifestyle. If you're new here, by the way, consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you guys back for more videos. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 must-have apps for all doctors and medical students anywhere around the world, but more specifically in the UK because that's where I'm based. But trust me, you'll find this useful wherever you are. So guys, I've got my phone here, my iPhone here to show you my top 10 must-have apps. So let's get right into it. The first app I think every doctor and medical student should have is the MDCalc app. And basically, you use this app to calculate certain scores to aid the clinical decision. So, for example, I tend to use the well score a lot to rule out a DVT or PE. Notice I said rule out because obviously this well score is actually designed to rule out and not to confirm a PE. I use the well score a lot here, which you can see malignancy is a risk factor, active cancer, if you've been bedridden, again, you score higher. So these are pretty common these are pretty common sense questions, but obviously when you're in a when you're at work, it helps to just you know document that you've calculated the score and you've thought about it. Another one I tend to use a lot and my trust is the stone score. Now if you suspect someone's got a renal stone slash renal colic, then you tend to calculate the stone score because at my trust you can't actually book a CT KUB scan which is a CT kidney ureter bladder scan to confirm a renal colic unless you've calculated the stone score and they actually need to score above six for them to be suitable for the scan so as you can see here you've got the sex the duration of pain race nausea vomiting hematuria and all of that another one I tend to use the Ottawa score which is helpful for ruling out a subarachnoid hemorrhage so, so yeah there are loads of other scores on here, but those are my favorites. My second must-have app for all doctors and medical students is the Talkspace app. Now, if you don't know about the Talkspace app, it's basically an app that you can go and look for how to treat, manage, you know, and confirm an overdose of a certain medication. So, for example, you know, we tend to get a lot of paracetamol overdoses in the emergency department where I work. And despite seeing paracetamol overdoses so many times, I still need to go and refer to these guidelines because, you know, it really depends on how many hours ago the person took the tablet and that kind of determines on what exactly you should do. So I always go and double check. So for example, let's put in paracetamol here. Um, you can see here that it tells you how to manage it and you can see that you know the management is different if the overdose was taken less than eight hours ago or if it was taken eight to 24 hours ago or if it was taken 24 hours ingestion so you kind of click on the relevant one so let's say it was eight hours ago you kind of it, it tells you exactly what to do and what to expect how to manage it depending on whether it's a neonate or not what bloods to take this graph you can see here is extremely helpful because basically you confirm with the patient how many hours they took the tablet and then look at the x-axis and then trace it up to the y-axis and that kind of tells you what level you should be if you've if you've taken too much and if you're below that treatment line then you're fine with paracetamol as well it lets you know that you know you should not be testing paracetamol levels and or until at least four hours after ingestion so some people will come in two hours after taking 24 tablets of paracetamol but you should not be check taking their blood until after four hours because the paracetamol levels are not going to be high enough to actually indicate whether they need treatment or not the third app i think every doctor and medical student should have is the induction app this is such a useful app because it contains all the numbers of all the people you need to contact which is so helpful because sometimes if you're stuck somewhere on a night shift something and you need to get a number asap you might have to spend ages trying to log onto a computer, trying to get onto the internet, to the telephone directory. It's just so much more helpful if you have it on your app. So I did my F1 at Nottingham City Hospital, which is why you can see the directory here. And it just shows different numbers on here. And you can just type in the number directly from anywhere you're in the hospital. So yeah, I think that's a must have. My fourth must have app for every doctor and medical student is the BNF app. Now this is an app you use to go and confirm medication doses before prescribing. This app is so useful and back in the day they used to use the BNF book version but obviously times are changing guys. If you're still using the book, get with the program, okay? One thing I, I tend to use it for, I'm just that off the top of my head is for example to prescribe gabapentin. Gabapentin is useful for neuropathic pain, right? But then I just find it always confusing trying to remember how to prescribe it. So I always go and double check so I don't make a mistake. So let's just, I'll just show you guys how the app works. Go there, gabapentin, straightforward, indications and dose. And then it just lets you know 
what at the top what you're treating what you're using to treat you can use it to treat seizures but let's say i was using it for nerve pain peripheral neuropathic pain which is nerve pain and can you see it says initially 300 milligrams on day one and then 300 milligrams twice on day two and 300 milligrams three times a day on day three so as you can see it's not exactly the most straightforward medication to prescribe so i always go and refer to my bn the fifth app i think every doctor and medical student should have is the micro guide app now this is an app that is very useful for prescribing antibiotics because they actually arrange the antibiotics on a trust by trust basis i don't know if you guys know but in the uk every area has a different set of antibiotics they like to give for certain conditions i mean they use a couple of they use information gathered from different resources to decide on what best what kind of antibiotics works best in their population and you know there are other factors they take into consideration so this is very useful because i did f1 in a different place to f2 and when i moved i realized that you know i had to be referring back to the guidelines the antibiotic guidelines because they wanted us to use a different type of antibiotics where i was so yeah i'll just show you guys so as you can see they've got most of the hospitals in the uk on here so you can just click on whichever one so let's say we want to go for ashford we'll click on there go to continue and then you can just you know click on both sides and get the selected guidelines of that specific place and you can see what what antibiotics they use exactly so that's just going to take a few seconds so let's say somebody had a chest infection you can see that the first thing they use is um amoxicillin if it's you know if they're not very sick or if they've got a urine infection like a lower uti um, you can see that the first thing they like to use is nitrofurant toy. My sixth must-have app for every doctor and medical student is the Right Breathe app. Now this app is very very helpful. I mean if you've worked a rest job, you know what it's like when patients come to you, they haven't brought their medications in with them, they're quite sick and they're like, oh, um, I use this pink inhaler with like the orange bit at the top, you know, and you're just like, what like i don't even know what that is and you can't find anything on the system this app might be helpful because you can just go on there click on the right breathe app and what i tend to do is i show the patient i'm like oh so do you did you mean this one like this gray one with the pink top or you know it's very very helpful for that reason my seventh must have app for all doctors and medical students is the medscape app i think it's actually a us based app and it's very very helpful when i can't find it, you know helpful information like the nice website or my hospital guidelines that tends to be the case in conditions we don't see very often so i refer to medscape and that tends to have information on the on the condition um, for example i think i recently checked up on pot disease i heard somebody mention that at work and we don't see that very often in the uk um and i remember learning that in medical school so i forgot about it and i decided to use the medscape app to refer to it i'll just show you guys how you use that so you click on there and then you just search whatever you want so as you can see it's actually coming up on my recently viewed i'll just click on that gives you the background about it it's basically post disease is basically tb of the spine you click on you can check on what other differentials what other conditions can present like that you can check up on how to investigate it or confirm the diagnosis how to treat it my eighth must have app for all doctors and medical students is geeky medics now if you guys don't use geeky medics already i use this a lot in medical school and i tend to use it sometimes as well as a doctor when you don't do a procedure often enough you tend to get you know a bit should I say rusty at it? Not like you don't know how to do it, but you just need something to refresh your mind prior to doing it. So I tend to refer to Geeky Medics for it. I started as an F1. I tend to, I used it on my first time before doing an ABG because despite me doing ABGs once in a while in medical school, I was a bit nervous about doing it the first time. So I just went on here to have a look at how to do an ABG and I kind of felt confident and I got it first time. My ninth must have app for all doctors and medical students is the iResource app. Now this app, I'll show you guys, if you're in the UK and you're a doctor, you would need to do ALS at some point in your life within the first two years, two years of working here. This app is very, very helpful for refreshing your memory of the ALS. And you know, with the ALS as well, you have an assessment component of it. So I actually use this to revise when I was preparing for the ALS. So you can go to the adult guidelines, let's say where to look at advanced life support, um, it just kind of lets you know what to do depending on the situation. So CPR 30 to 2 for adults. Um, it lets you know what to what to do depending on what rhythm you see on the strip. So let's say somebody is in pulseless VT, you click on that, you know. So yeah, just tells you what exactly to do, and I find that very very helpful too. So my final tenth must have app, or should I say, sorry, website for every doctor in the UK is the General Medical Council. So. You go on your internet explorer and then you click on the GMC website and it's kind of like a mobile, they've arranged a mobile page for you guys. 
and you can you know every doctor is going to use this at some point you need to pay your yearly gmc fees if you're going to do plab you need to go, you're going to get your plab results on here um also if you need to book your plab exam you're going to do it on here if you need to do your revalidation which you need to do in the uk every couple of years you're going to do it on here and that thing is useful for is managing ethical scenarios they've got a lot of learning resources on here so that's also helpful and i think you guys find it beneficial i should probably use it more than i do anyway this is a must have website for every this is a must use should i say website for every doctor in the uk so yeah guys those are my top 10 must have apps slash one website um for all doctors and medical and possibly medical students in the uk um i hope you guys found it helpful let me know in the comments which apps you use the most if you do and let me know in the comments if you like this video please give it a thumbs up as well it really helps me know what you guys enjoy um, and if you haven't already consider subscribing to my channel guys i would love to have you back for more videos thank you guys so much for watching and see you in my next one bye